हेलो एवरी वन लेट एस टू डी अंडरस्टैंड प्रिंसिपल प्रोसीजर एंड कैलकुलेशन रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दी एक्सपेरिमेंट नंबर वन दैट इज एस्टिमेशन ऑफ डेक्सट्रोज बाय कलरी मेटरी एज पर पी सी आई सिलेबस यू सी हियर दिस इज द डेक्सट्रोज आई कॉल दिस एज माई सैम्पल और द टेस्ट सोल्यूशन विच इज प्रोवाइडेड टू मी राइट आई नो डेक्सट्रोज इज रिड्यूसिंग शुगर राइट and since i know the sample name of the sample name of the compound which is present in the given sample solution that i know i just want to find out how much dextrose is present in the given sample solution so definitely this comes under the category of quantitative analysis now this dextrose estimation that is quantitative estimation we will be doing using this reagent which is called as dnsa now what is this dnsa if you number this 1 2 3 4 and 5 so to be very specific it is 3 5 dinitro salicylic acid since dextrose is reducing sugar it has ability to reduce many of the organic compounds so during this process when we will follow the procedure uh, there will be some heating also for some time we will be heating the solution so during that time this dnsa gets converted to 3 amino 5 nitro salicylic acid and this product which is formed in the test tube that has some color see the original color of dnsa is yellow whereas the color of this product is orange to brown so the color intensity depends on the concentration of dextrose also that also depends on the temperature uh, at which we have heated it that also depends on the duration or the time for which we have heated the compound right now if you so lower the concentration of dextrose lower will be the color intensity okay and higher the concentration of dextrose higher will be the color intensity so whatever sample and standard solutions we have we have to treat them equally in the same manner equal treatment has to be given to all the test tubes so that there is no variation in the uh, duration of uh, heating or the temperature action we are doing by colorimetry so what is colorimetry i will not go in much details of the colorimetry you all know that in colorimeter that is the spectrophotometer we use visible radiations the lamp which is present in the colorimeter gives out the visible radiations that is from 400 to 800 nanometers so whenever i pour the sample solution in the sample holder the radiations which are passing through it that is visible radiations okay i have to select the lambda max of the compound which is under experiment so only that one wavelength will pass through the sample solution and the sample molecules which are present here they will absorb the energy from these radiations whatever is not absorbed that will go out means that is transmitted and this absorbance we will get on the display of the machine four important point i want to tell you here under the principle that the the concentration of dextrose in the given sample solution we are finding out by linear regression analysis this linear re regression analysis encompasses two uh, steps that is first the preparation of graph which is concentration versus absorbance so once i uh, get the concentrations of the standard solution ye concentration kiska hai standard solution ka concentration and whatever absorbances i get from the machine those absorbances i'll put i'll draw the line and sample ka absorbance will be interpolated here and this is the concentration of the sample solution so this is how a graph will be plotted and then the second step will be uh, formation of the equation of this straight line this graph is a straight line right each straight line has equation y is equal to mx plus c this is also represented as alpha plus beta x so what is beta beta is slope what is alpha alpha is y intercept so in this way i have to find out alpha and beta uh, also from this calculation also i will get concentration of the sample so concentration of the sample i get by these from these two steps that is concentration by graph and concentration by calculation now this is the procedure i have kept it in tabular form so if you see here the concentration of standard stock solution is given to me so i here i have two solutions one is standard solution 
एंड अनदर इज सैंपल सोल्यूशन ओके तो इतना तो मुझे पता है कि सैंपल में हाउ मच इज द डेक्सट्रोज प्रेजेंट वो मुझे फाइंड आउट करना है राइट एंड फॉर दैट आई एम यूजिंग दिस स्टैंडर्ड डेक्सट्रोज सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो सो वेन एवर आई से स्टैंडर्ड मतलब मुझे उसके बारे में सब पता है वो क्या है वो कितना है वो सब पता है ओके सो आई नो दैट दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड डेक्सट्रोज सोल्यूशन ऑफ द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टू एम जी पर एम एल ओके टू एम जी पर एम एल नाउ फ्रॉम दिस टू एम जी पर एम एल I am withdrawing 0.5 ml, 1 ml, 1.5 ml, 2 ml, and 2.5 ml. So these one, two, three, four, five different test tubes I have. In each test tube, whatever is the stated amount in this table, that I will take from this standard solution. If you see here in the first test tube, since this is the blank test tube, blank solution, there will be no dextrose added. so this is 0 ml for the blank test tube and this question mark means this is my sample solution so in sample solution i am taking this 1.5 ml from this flask that is sample flask okay so these are my 5 1 2 3 4 five standard working standards which i have prepared from this standard stock solution of dextrose now uh, now at this point i have these seven test tubes ready with me in all the test tubes 1 ml of the dnsa reagent will be added in all the test tubes even in blank i told you no same treatment we have to give to all test tubes once i add the dnsa i have to heat it in boiling water bath for 3 to 5 minutes so one precaution you have to take here whenever you will keep your test tubes for heating in the water bath that means in a small beaker you will keep all the test tubes okay the water in the beaker has to be preheated it should be hot enough otherwise if you keep it in the cold water and you start heating the heating will uh, the flame will heat the water from the periphery so whichever test tube is placed in the center that test tube will get the heat later on after few seconds as compared to the test tubes which are in the periphery so the same treatment will not be given the time for which we are heating the test tubes that will vary from test tube to test tube so to avoid that preheated water bath has to be there then once the color is developed during this 3 to 5 minutes the color will be developed the color will uh, will be developed because of the 3 amino phi nitro salicylic acid then you stop heating after that remove all the test tubes from the water bath keep it in the test tube rack then make up the volume to 10 ml using distilled water allow all the test tubes to to cool down at room temperature and then you measure the absorbance at 540 nanometers using the colorimeter so this is the procedure why 540 nanometers this could be the lambda max of the given compound so in uv or visible spectrophotometry whatever wavelength we select for measuring the absorbance of the compound that is the lambda max of that compound we prefer a measurement of absorbance at the lambda max of the compound and one more important point which you have to remember here while making up the volume this step while making up the volume to 10 ml you first have to transfer the contents from the test tubes to the volumetric flask of the volume 10 ml okay why is that so you may ask ki 10 ml ke flask ko hi hum heating ke liye rakhte the na bade se water bath mein okay but that is not correct way of doing it because the volumetric flasks which are made up of glass these glasses or these flasks are calibrated for that much volume right we cannot heat these calibrated uh, vessels directly in the water bath therefore you have to first transfer the contents from test tube full content from the test tube to volumetric flask and remaining volume you can make up with distilled water so that all the test tubes are at 10 ml now if you see here the first column is concentration of dextrose solution okay so the after making up the volume to 10 ml if you see here all the test tubes ka volume is 10 ml but in all the test tubes amount of dextrose is different therefore concentration of each flask is different okay so this is also 10 ml 10 ml 10 ml 10 ml 10 ml and 10 ml but here there is no dextrose here 0.5 ml dextrose is there here one ml dextrose is there here 1.5 ml 2 ml 2.5 ml and here 1.5 ml from the sample solution so in each of this 10 ml flask the 
amount of dextrose that is the concentration of dextrose is different and why do i need to know the concentration because from these concentrations only i will understand the concentration of dextrose in the given sample solution so now i will write the uh, observation table in the form of concentration and absorbance so if you see here i have got the absorbance values for five different concentrations and for sample also now i have to plot a graph of concentration versus absorbance so i have these concentrations 1 2 3 4 and 5 i'll plot them on the graph nicely you have to plot it and then draw a best fit line okay now whatever is the concentration for each flask how you will find out that before you plot this graph you should know na what is the concentration of each flask so how to calculate that simple formula c1 v1 c2 v2 right so the standard stock solution which was there its concentration was 2 mg per ml so for this first test tube if you remember 0.5 ml was withdrawn from this standard stock solution so from 2 mg per ml 0.5 ml was withdrawn and ultimately the volume was made up to 10 ml so what is the concentration of this solution so if you see here this is 0.1 mg per ml similarly when i have withdrawn here 1 ml okay the calculation becomes from 2 mg per ml i have withdrawn 1 ml and volume was made up to 10 ml so what is the concentration of this flask right so this is 2 by 10 that means it is 0.2 mg per ml so all these concentrations if you find out from c1 v1 c2 v2 the concentrations are coming to be 0.1 mg per ml 0.2 mg per ml 0.3 0.4 and 0.5 mg per ml so unit of this concentration is mg per ml okay from this standard stock solution we have prepared five working standards so this working standard concentrations we have plotted here on the graph now whatever is the absorbance of sample that absorbance i will interpolate here and this concentration is the concentration of sample now one important point which i want to tell you here is now the absorbances which we have taken no those are the absorbances of these flasks 10 ml flasks right so whatever concentrations we have calculated that is the concentration of this 10 ml flask only okay so the sample i have taken 1.5 ml in that sample 1 ml dnsa was added and then volume was made up to 10 ml right same way here also the uh, 0.5 ml 1 ml 1.5 ml 2 ml and 2.5 ml standard dextrose solution was taken in that 1 ml dnsa was added and then volume was made up to 10 ml for all the flask so whatever concentrations we have calculated right now those are the concentrations of all these flasks so whatever concentration i have got from the graph that is also a concentration of this 10 ml flask but i want to find out concentration of the sample solution which i have taken 1.5 ml its concentration i have to report in terms of mg per ml so that i will tell you now concentrations and these are the absorbances just now we have seen how how to find out the concentration and how to plot the concentration and absorbance graph once i plot the graph the sample ka absorbance 0.621 will be interpolated here and this is the concentration of the sample let us assume that the concentration of sample is 0.35 mg per ml and now let us see how by calculation that is by finding out alpha and beta i get the concentration of sample so this is the formula for calculating alpha and beta now to calculate alpha and beta i require sigma x sigma x square again sigma x sigma xy sigma x square sigma x the whole square same way for beta also now how to find out these values here x is nothing but concentration y is nothing but absorbance and to find out this alpha and beta i will be considering the x and y only for standards of course not for sample because sample ka x we have to find out from alpha and beta so x square and xy i have calculated what is this x square x square means square of 0.1 square of 0.2 square of 0.3 and so on and what is xy multiplication of 0.1 and 0.368 which is the absorbance of this solution so that is xy and in the 
after calculating x square and all x y values sigma x will be calculated that is summation of all these values in sub ka summation then sigma x the whole square 1.5 ka square then sigma y will be calculated that is summation of all these values then sigma x square matlab summation of all these x squares so this sigma x square and sigma x the whole square these are two different okay these are different units so be careful while substituting it here here it is sigma x square and here it is sigma x the whole square then sigma x y that is summation of all these values once i find out that i will substitute everything here in alpha and beta formula and then i will find out the alpha and beta using the calculator so these are the values of alpha and beta which i have found out here now equation of the regression line and i have substituted value of alpha here and value of beta also here after substituting the values of alpha and beta y that is the absorbance of sample which we have written earlier okay that which we have got from the instrument that absorbance value we will substitute here and we will get the x that is 0.34 so concentration of the sample by calculation concentration of the sample by graph we have got here 0.34 and 0.35 now was that the final answer no that is the sample concentration that is 0.34 mg per ml and 0.35 mg per ml concentration so this is the concentration of the same sample solution by two different ways and this is the concentration of this 10 ml flask that means i have to find out concentration of this sample solution then only i will get full marks so now from here i have to find out concentration of this so i call this as back calculation and for the back calculation i require dilution factor this how to calculate dilution factor i have one separate video on that also you can check that so 10 ml by 1.5 ml this is the dilution factor 6.66 is the dilution factor now to know the concentration of sample solution suppose this solution is a and this was the solution b okay so concentration of dextrose in solution a is equal to dilution factor multiplied by concentration of dextrose in solution b so this is 6.66 multiplied by 0.34 2.2644 mg per ml this is the concentration of dextrose in the given sample solution so this 0.34 i have taken by calculation same calculation i will do for by graph also okay i will show that also now same way i will find out concentration of dextrose in solution a by multiplying dilution factor with concentration of dextrose in solution b so that is 6.66 multiplied by 0.35 and the answer is coming out to be 0.331 mg per ml here also it is mg per ml so i have got the final answer here that is the concentration of this sample solution by two methods or by two ways we can say okay one by graph and another by calculation so how to write the result statement because in the final exam one mark or two marks are specially kept for writing the result statement so that i will uh, show you on the next slide so it was by calculation i think it was 2.26 and it was 2.33 mg per ml so content of dextrose was found to be in the given sample solution that is 2.26 mg per ml by calculation and by graph so this was the linear regression analysis